after two days of action, all the teams were desperate to get some running in as the final day of action in Jerez was about to get underway. It was no surprise that the Inata Rope were on top once again as Alex Moores was on top of the session on the 131.371 and setting the soft tyres. But a weird lack of grip in the afternoon session curtailed his running, once again giving an Rope concerns about their reliability. Tove continued to impress in the final day of action. Tom Mungle set the second fastest time of the day of a 21.6 and are now at the top of the mileage chart. Rosie O'Driscoll continued to impress in the Coombe GP by setting the third fastest time of a 121.728, also proving Coombe GP's improvement. It was a big day for Phoebe O'Connor as she got her first run in the RTS, which she'll make her debut in at the Australian Grand Prix. She proved the car's pace by setting the fifth fastest time of the day on a 121.890 but her running was curtailed at the end of the day due to an engine issue. Marta Force struggled a bit. Dan Mena only set the sixth fastest time on a 122.037, but the team still remained upbeat over their chances for this year. It was a big day for Lucy Woodward in the Brown Asso as she tested her car for this year for the first time. However, she struggled just like her teammate had the day before, as she was only able to set the ninth fastest time on a 122.449. During the session, I went trackside to see how each of the cars looked at particular parts of the track. Well, hello everyone, welcome to my first trackside venture of the final day in Jerez. And this is at the hairpin where you can really see how each car is at under braking. Coombe GP have been saying because they had a couple of spins at the final corner, which I'm considering going to later for my later trackside venture. But you can really see how good each car is under braking. Here you can see the MAT Mosset. But Apulet is currently on the hard tyre. You can see the Gindana has... Very good braking power. As you can see it. Joshua Moore is able to brake quite late going into that corner as well. And here you've got the speed set going through of Elliot Everson. Obviously in Elliot Everson's first venture out in the speed tech. And you can see this massive train of cars. Just look at how good, how stable the Anata Roka is under braking. But also you could see the tow looks very good under braking as well but what people are saying is that their long run pace is a, their pace is good about toe their pace is good over a single lap but then once the tires start to wear out they start to struggle a little bit so that indicates that they have a car that should easily make q3 on multiple occasions but the problem that they've got is that they'd fall back in the race. So they might do some things with strategy to compensate for it. Anyway, that is the end of my first trackside venture of the day. And we'll see you later for my, my second trackside venture. Well, hello everyone and welcome to my final trackside venture of the day here at Jerez. The final trackside venture of the week here at Jerez. And it has definitely been a very interesting week so far. And an interesting start to pre-season testing. Like for example, the Anata Roca. Easily the quickest car. Clearly it, they do have the quickest car. But it is not completely bulletproof as we've seen. In fact just now, the way that the Anata Roca were... Just oversteering all over the place just now. Literally, I mean, I'm apparently hearing that it has sorted, it is sorting itself out. But literally, every time he came round just now, he was just all over the place. His car just did not want to stick. But clearly, Yanata Roka have the fastest car. 
And they are certainly looking like they are going to be the team to beat. In fact, there is Alex Moores going round now. That looks fairly fine. That is Alex Moores. Currently having an eventful time thing. He did just spin over there as I was trying to get to this place. But another driver, has, once again, I've been very impressed with every time she's gone round. Rosie O'Driscoll. She, so far, has completely exceeded everyone's expectations. She seems to have got to grips with the car quickly. Even though she's only been in a CRC car twice. She seems to have really got to grips with this car very quickly. There you can see her going around, pounding around behind the Dork racing car of Hannah Duran, who I believe is on a long run at the moment. But I would not be surprised. I'm telling you, I would not be surprised to see Rosie O'Driscoll win a race this season. Coombe GP certainly looked like they do have a car that's good enough to win races this year. And... Yes, I think it will take a little, in the early races, it will take a little bit of a while for her to, to get up to speed. But she does have a, a very strong teammate to learn from in the form of Toby Jones. And I think also with the team that she has behind her, I think that she could be in for a very good first year. So, watch that girl. I think she is going to be very quick. And... In terms of how each car looks, like, really looks. Obviously, Yonata Roka, easily the best round here. Cars that look like they're really struggling. Baron Asso and DMAD, they seem to be really struggling for pace. And they have a lot of work to do. And you can see the CGP goes round. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this Trackside Venture. Join me back in the pit lane later in this roundup for the team by team roundup and for my next trackside venture, we will see you in Bahrain. So, with that, the final day in Hareth has come to an end. Now I'm going to do my final team by team rundown of the Hareth test. Yunata Roka, as mentioned before, Easy the quickest car, but once again, showing that they're not bulletproof because of a problem in the second part in the afternoon session, which curtailed his running, reduced him to only 25 laps. The team haven't actually yet worked out the cause of the problem, but it was actually causing him to oversteer out of every corner and at some points spin. He spun at least 10 times during that session, and was oversteering in places the car wasn't oversteering in this morning. So, but still the fastest time, so Yonatoro can still head to Bahrain feeling confident that they have the fastest car. He ended up on a 121.371, which was the fastest time, and completed 105 laps today, but that was a lot less than he would have wanted. Tove, Tom Munger at the wheel today, once again proving the car's potential. I think they should be regular Q3 contenders this year because that car has clearly demonstrated it does have potential. Last year they made a massive step forward to get from the back of the field to regular point scorers and they have seemed to have taken that up a notch further this year and they also are at the top of the mileage sheet with 460 laps completed throughout the whole weekend going into Bahrain. So a very positive start for Tove. Tom Mungle set the second fastest time on a 121.669. Looked a little bit less consistent in the long runs, but over single lap pace, they have a very good car. Long run pace, they need to work on a little bit though, looking at the later times that he set. Coombe GP... In my opinion, I think, at this stage, look to be Yanataroka's closest challengers. They have clearly made a step forward this year with the car. And Rosie O'Driscoll, once again, proving 
that she should be one to watch this year. As I said when I was trackside, and I said I wouldn't be surprised to see her win a race this year. She seemed to get used to the car quickly. Did a 121.728 and was able to do 117 laps today. But it wasn't all plain sailing for her because she did actually have a brake failure in the first part of the session. Which was... Kind of demonstrated, I think braking seems to be QGP's weaknesses, because Rosie O'Driscoll spun under braking going into the final corner on yesterday, and Toby Jones did exactly the same thing on Friday. Toby Jones didn't recover. Rosie was able to get going again, but that's something that Coombe GP will definitely be looking at. Gintana, I think they are currently fifth at the moment in terms of the pecking order. I mean, the car has potential. Because Joshua Moores did set the fourth fast time of 121.877. Easily their best performance so far this weekend. Showing that the car does have potential. But they probably will be wanting a bit more than what they've already had. 150 laps Joshua Moores was able to do today. RTS. Phoebe O'Connor's first go in the car. Despite a problem at the end of the afternoon session which curtailed her running. She was able to set the fifth fast this time on a 121.890. And she also completed 130 laps today. So that car seems to have potential. Master Force, they would have probably wanted a bit more today, considering that he was on Dan Milner was on the soft tyres for both of his runs in the Master Force. But 154 laps completed. Master Force remain upbeat about their chances for this year. DMAD, a bit of an improvement for them. Seventh fastest, Lucas Quinton is at the seventh fast summon at 122.114, albeit on the soft tyres. 160 laps completed today, but still, there is clearly a lot of work to do at the DMAD team because they have not looked that good so far. CGP, reasonable day for them. 151 laps completed. Maximum Degola, the 8th fastest driver on a 122.348. So, reasonable day for him and CGP. Brown Asso, again, struggles. Lucy Woodward does a 122.449 on soft tyres. 137 laps completed after a problem at the end of the afternoon session with the engine where she had to stop out on track but there'll be probably more concern about their lack of pace I mean today I'd say there was a slight improvement on yesterday for Baron Asso but Baron Asso have just looked very off and they clearly have a lot of work to do before Bahrain if they want to stay competitive Dork 10th fast time panel around 122.499 it may seem bad, but the fact is, she did both of the sessions today on the hard tyre, so was clearly focusing on the long runs rather than setting fast times. She did 162 laps today, which is the most out of anyone. Mossett. They were having a reasonable day, but then... Their running was curtailed at the end due to an engine problem on the car, which Abby Leggett was driving today. Abby Leggett did a 122.755, which is the 11th fastest time, completed 140 laps. So, Mossett still, I'm pretty sure, will be keeping upbeat going into Bahrain, because they have had a fairly reasonable start, especially yesterday. Speedtech showing signs of vulnerability, problems in both of the sessions today. Elliot Everson sets the 12th fastest time at 123.377 in his first go in the Speedtech, completes 127 laps. So, a bit of a troubled day at Speedtech and for Elliot Everson. HWR, James Lang. His first go in the car did a 125.875 on the hard tyre. Did 149 laps. So a reasonable day for HWR. That is it from 
Hareth. The next testing roundup will be for the Bahrain test in two weeks' time. But it's now time for the teams to take a break and to see how they can improve in the short time they have as the start of the season looms.